Hello, this is William Hung, and it is Delster time. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Seltzer Time Podcast. It's your boy, Ricky, a.k.a. Dick Chuck, a.k.a. the man behind the can at Seltzer Time Official. Here, as always, with my conversation accomplice, the mayor of the hunch vote was there, Travis. What is cracking, Fizzle Fiends? Welcome back to another episode of the Seltzer Time Podcast. And as always, we are delighted that you've returned. Yeah, welcome back, everybody. (laughs) Great A intro, sir. Nicely done. Hey, thanks, Uh, man. This week on the show, we are talking to Joe and Susan Skurzik of Glazy Susan, uh, city famous donut connoisseurs or providers. Oh, yes. That was yeah. my my breakfast and I guess you could say like first lunch, I guess, on Saturday. Brunch even? Yeah, it was kind of like my brunch. There you go. That makes sense. Second well, breakfast? Yeah, because actually it was more like second breakfast because I had... I had to go to Starbucks because I had to be to work by seven. So like nothing that I do is open by seven. <laughs> so I've been doing Starbucks. Um, and then just hooked us up with donuts on Saturday. So I. Would you consider that your 11 Z's? These dorky may not have. Anyway, these are all Lord of the Rings reference. So, oh, okay. I was like, I've never heard that, but I'm into it. <laughs> I don't before know we talk <laughs> about before we talk to Susan and Joe about donuts, you know what we got to do. Hey, Ricky, how was your week? Yeah, what's up? <laughs> um, my week was good. Uh, what did I do? I ordered the Mamaru McRib, I which I get to pick that. up, dude. So, okay, little thing about Mamaru. He posted like the classic McDonald's McRib. I forget what day. I think it went on sale on Saturday. So I think he posted it like Thursday or Friday in his story. And I was like, oh yeah, like I've never had a McRib like in my life. I've never had a McRib. So I was like, ah, like I know what it is. Like that's cool. And then the next day, McDonald's actually announced that they were bringing back the McRib. So Demoga, like like classic Demoga style, like lost his mind about it. It was like, I was just about to announce the Mama Room McRib, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, that would happen. But like they invented it. Like you can't get mad at them for announcing that they brought it back. So then on Saturday, and I knew he was like working with Ploof, Chris Ploof, uh, which I think we're going to do some kind of a giveaway thing with. I have some stuff. We'll talk about it later. Super Not exciting. on the podcast later. Uh, <laughs> but we, so I know he was working with Ploof to like make a mold for it, to like cut the ribs and all that stuff. And then on Saturday morning, I just happened to like in between folding shirts pop on Instagram and like, cause like my system was like fold count, jump on Instagram, fold count, jump on Instagram and a reward for the hard work. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I happened to pop on like two minutes after he announced that the McRib, his like the Mama Rue McRib uh, presale was live. So I was like, "Uh, do I do this? Like I've never, excuse me, I've had Mamaru um, a lot and it's everything I've ever had has been amazing, but I haven't taken part in the, like the meal pickup thing at Redemption Rock where you take it home and heat it up and, and put it together yourself. I haven't done that yet. So when he announced this and it looked absolutely beautiful and I kind of like, kind of just had to do it. So I pulled the trigger, got one. I'll pick it up on Wednesday along with some, some beers. Cause I'm almost out of Treehouse, So I'll just like kind of restock my fridge with some, uh, redemption rock. Two birds, one stop, you know? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It works out great. I'll say what's up to all the, all the homies over there, but so I got the McRib. So I'm pretty pumped about that. That's coming. I'm going to have that for dinner on Wednesday. Uh, so you've never had the true McRib. No, that's, that's no. fascinating that you're going to try the sandwich and not know the thing that it compares to fast food completely grosses me out. Oh, I get and the it. idea. So like, if you think about it, right. I mean, there's a million reasons why it's gross, but getting ribs at a restaurant, you're looking at like 
like a $20, usually that's like a $20 plate or like maybe a little bit less. I don't know. I'm just saying like, okay, you're no, I'm picking say, up you're say it's between like 15 and 20 bucks to get like a rack of ribs at a restaurant. I don't know. It's usually not a thing I get cause they're so messy. Like I have them at barbecues, but that's cause I can like eat and then dive in a pool or whatever. Dive in a pool. The rest, like <laughs> I'm just saying, like you, I never get them at restaurants cause you're usually your like, poor, you're covered in your barbecue poor sauce. Pool filter is going to be just filled with barbecue sauce the end of the next season. <laughs> Totally Sorry, didn't mean to derail you. No, it totally is. I'm going to learn how to make ribs and I'm just going to have ribs like six days a week. Just me because Naomi's vegetarian. So I'll just be like crushing ribs and then like the pool. You're right. They'll just be floating barbecue sauce, like film on top of the pool. It's so gross. Uh, so you've had ribs. And it so just- I've had, yeah, like you get ribs somewhere and it's like, it's like 20 bucks, right? McDonald's, a McRib is like probably like what, three bucks or something. Like, that's so weird to me that people think that that's, like, a thing. I don't know. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I'll get Burger King here and there. Like, hell yeah. And I know it's, like, gross. But, like, in the burgers that cost a dollar is very strange. But ribs that cost no money, I don't know what it is. It just, like, grosses me out. So I stay in, like, fish filet. Like, fish from McDonald's sounds like a sick night waiting to happen. And I don't want to deal with it. I kind of feel the same way about ribs. I'll crush a burger if I have to, but I can't do uh, something so, else. Between the two of us, I am the fast food connoisseur. I it just scratches an itch that I've had my entire life, and I don't I don't eat it as much as I used to. Have you had but, the McRib? Oh, of course, a oh. bunch of times. Well, Is so, it good? Yeah. Well, so <laughs> have you never had just like a riblet sandwich or like, do you remember Applebee's had those shitty like bottomless ribs for a while? So whenever I think of ribs, I always think of the Applebee's like baby back ribs. That's that's Chili's. Oh fuck. Whatever. I I feel you. So it's not a traditional rib in the sense that like, if you get a McRib sandwich, you're not pulling out a bone. You're not feeling like Fred Flintstone getting a thing. Oh yeah. yeah. I kind of figured like you're not going to bite into like a, it's a lot like a hot dog in a way where it's just like rendered down ribs. Okay. Um, And there's a reason it's a mold because they take all this pork and then just (laughs) squeeze it into a mold. So that's what I, much like a chicken. I couldn't figure that out. Okay, that kind of makes sense. So it's I couldn't figure ground, that out. But it's definitely not whole pieces of rib. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I knew, I knew I wasn't going to like, <laughs> I mean, I was hoping for like my teeth sake. It wasn't like a, a rack of ribs in between like a baguette. I was like, fuck it. It's got pickles on it. I'm diving in. I didn't want to be like spitting out molars or whatever, but. Worth it. Like, like a yeah. gas tooth <laughs> smile. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, um. But yeah, so enough rib talk. I got rib, I got the Mamaru McRib. I'm sure you guys will see it all over the internet because like yeah. I don't do a whole lot without it going, you know, up on the gram or or anywhere. Um, what else did I do this week? I watched the Get a Kids live stream on Thursday night last week. That was fun. You and a bunch of other people. That looked like it went yeah. really well. Yeah, it was a blast. It was funny because about 20 minutes before it started, uh Joe Dufresne Gonzalez texted me and was like, Hey man, are you going out to the show tonight? And I texted, <laughs> I texted him back and I was like, yeah, man, I wish we could have driven in together. Like we were like treating you like it was like a real show that we were That's going awesome. To. That's and super he rad. Like, he was like, dude, I really wish that we could have, uh, like had a bunch of people watching it and like did a zoom thing and stuff like that. So I think that might be something that happens in the future with a show that does a live stream. Yeah. Um, but it was awesome. I mean, they were great. They played literally stuff from pretty much every record, which I thought was really cool. Uh, they put a couple songs off guilt show, which is my favorite get up kids record. I don't remember if they played anything off kicker, which came out a couple years ago, but I really love kicker. Uh, so I was kind of hoping for that. I can't remember if they played anything. I don't think they did. And then what else did I do? Shout out to the kid at Starbucks on Saturday morning because it snowed on Friday and then the whole world froze that night. I left my house at like 6.30-ish on Saturday morning and my garage opened and my car, I wasn't like parked in the garage, I was parked in the driveway, but everything was a brick of ice and I was like, frig, 
So <laughs> I started my car. I had to like find my scraper and I'm in there just like banging all that out, driving to work. I'm like, even when you're driving and you're still breathing out the like the cold air smoke, I had that going on. And I pulled cold up. Cold air smoke. Started, Look, dog. Cold air smoke. Smoking. I don't know what it's called. No, I know exactly like, what you meant though. Yeah. Like, you know, oh yeah, steam. It's like, yeah, whatever. So like I pull up. Naomi's over there like it's condensation. This is why we have Idiot. significant others. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, they're smarter exactly. than us. They make us. They make us sound smarter. No, one hundred percent. So I pull up to the drive-through, and like if you watch my newest vlog, you'll see this part. But the kid, <laughs> I just edited it today, so like that's why it's on my mind. I forgot to even film this part. Good but cross I pull plug. Up, hey, you know what I mean. So I pull up to the drive to the little drive-through thing, and there's nobody there, which was awesome pull up and the kid's like hey uh good morning welcome to starbucks where it's always 75 and sunny and but and like and i was like it's not 75 or sunny but that kid fucking rules he completely just set me in the right mood for the day have so shout se- out to that kid have you seen that reminds me of the youtube video it's an old youtube video of like a mcdonald's drive through kid and it's a kid just like that like over the top like just repeating, oh, you want two pickles? You got it. Two pickles for the mickles. Like it's just in sandwich meal with no lettuce, please. Oh, oh, now we're talking sandwich meal, no lettuce, no worries. And we'll drink on that bad boy. Super. That's fantastic. Oh, I love it. I, I, I've never experienced that in real life, but I dream about it. Yeah, no, dude, it was the closest I've ever come to that type of experience. Uh, this kid fucking ruled. So shout out Immediately to him. put a smile on your face. He really did. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was, I literally was like, ha, ha, ha. and like in the video, you can see me, I'm like brushing snow off of the, like the window, like where the window went down. It's disgusting out. It's currently, I'm like, it's, it's, it was gross, but yeah, that kid just like really put me in the right mood. I ordered the wrong coffee, but it turned out to be exactly what I needed. So when you get the like nitro cold brew, it only comes in a grande. I tried to order that cause I'm obsessed with it, but the kid, I ordered, uh, a cold brew with the sweet cream. I didn't order the nitro part. So when I heard the response of, yeah, man, what, what size would you like? I was like, Oh, so I was like, dude, can I get, can I get a venti on that? Thinking like this kid's definitely hooking it up. And he's like, yeah, man, of course, of course you can. So then I order a baking Gouda and I was like, Hey, Hey, while, while we're at it, can I, can I bump that up to a Trento? And he's like, dude, anything you need, we got you. And I'm like, Oh my God, this kid's the man. Then I started driving away and realized I ordered the wrong drink. So he was just doing what he would do for anybody in that situation. Yeah. But I needed the bigger one. It was right. He was right. You're making him feel good because he thinks he's upselling you. And Oh, he was killing it. He was absolutely killing it. So awesome. shout out to that kid. Uh, and then other than that, I've just kind of been like, you know, trying to mentally prepare myself for today, which is the one year anniversary of the dive bar closing. But also for tomorrow which is, I want to say it's the election, but it's also like just the start of a very awkward multi-day panic attack, I think, Uh, for a lot of people. Who knows, man? I'm trying to avoid it like the plague, trying to avoid it like COVID-19 right now, but yeah, it's, it's everywhere. It's on everybody's mind. It's like... Yeah, Yeah. I don't foresee myself getting much sleep. I haven't been sleeping very well, and like do I really think all bed and them all shit's going to break loose? No, but who the hell knows? Like who knows, man? Yeah. It's, it's kind of wild. I mean, it's like wild thinking about the fact that like, we're probably not going to find out tomorrow what's going on, which means like, it's like a multi-day. Well, but again, migraine. this isn't a political show. We keep telling that, but it all depends on what this asshole pulls, man. And if he thinks, yeah. It just needs to be a blowout. It needs to be a blowout. That would be ideal. That would be ideal. How was your week? Yeah, so it's been good. I've been trying to avoid this for as much as possible. Um, I visited the Rockwells last week. I don't go anywhere. I don't do anything. So we, Matt and I talked, and it was his birthday on Halloween. So I said, you know. Happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, Matt Rockwell. 35, still alive. There he um, is. <laughs> and... Uh, so he felt comfortable with me coming down. So I went and spent some time with his kids. I love his kids. I love uh, Natalie and Bradley are just adorable children and they're so freaking smart. Um, and it's just, it's very cute. I read them some books before bed. Like that's adorable. 
we don't have kids. You know what I mean? So it's really yeah. nice to go experience this with somebody. I get to have all the highs. And then when they start acting a fool or acting obnoxious, like, all right, go back to parents because I'm not set up to deal with this. There you go. So that's very nice. Um, yeah, basically just worked, worked a whole bunch. Uh, oh, yeah. When did I look one up last week that I can talk about? Uh, the new Purgatory website went up. Purgatory Coffee, Ooh. which is a coffee shop down in Middletown, ran by a couple friends of mine. Uh, Purgatory Coffee Roasters, we did a full reskin, way better. It was like it was the kind of thing where we set up the original website before their full brand was kind of understood or fully developed, we'll call it. So uh, we kind of went back and shifted what was there more in line. And they said they'd be down to come on a future episode, so... But with today's guests, we may want to space them out a little bit because we're talking about a lot of breakfast items all at once. Dude, breakfast is, uh, doctors say it's the most important meal of the day. Most important. And Ron Swanson loves breakfast food and pretty dark-haired women. You may have misunderstood me, but I say all the bacon. I mean all the bacon. <laughs> All Literally right. every time I hear the word breakfast, I think of Ron Swanson saying that quote. And I'm like, same. I feel that. All right. Well, I guess without any further ado, take it away, us. Oh, What's cracking, funny. guys? This week on the show, we are talking to Susan and Joe Skurzik of Glazy Susan Donuts. Hey, guys, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, thanks for having, having us. us. So off the bat, we know you guys have been super busy getting everything in order with the grand opening. But before we get to the big mega news, let's let's take a step back and kind of set the stage. You know, how have you guys got to this point? You've clearly been at it for a few years. Matthew. Yeah, so um, most people know that we started as a pop-up. Um, Susan and I, uh, it really started back in 2015 for us, our, our donut story, if you will. We were, we were donut lovers before we were donut eaters or donut, I mean, sorry, donut makers. Um, in 2015, we were planning to go out to Los Angeles. Uh, my younger brother, who's a performing artist, had picked up and moved out to L.A. to pursue his career. And, you know, as we typically do, we were planning our trip around what we're going to eat. Um, and so we were doing research and all these donut shops kept coming up in our research and we we're like oh okay interesting yeah. we love donuts uh but the whole like specialty donut movement really hadn't taken hold in new england yet um you know the providence shops didn't exist yet some of the boston shops didn't exist yet even some of the new york city shops uh that we go to didn't exist yet so this was like a novel thing for us so we yeah we decided let's check it out uh, so we went to this place in Santa Monica and we, it's open 24 seven. There are like lines down the street. Uh, we walk in, there's like this 20 foot case of donuts with, you know, every topping, you every can imagine, donut flavor right? you can imagine it was in that case. And so this is like our first experience with like bacon on a donut, which was crazy, like mind blowing at the time. Um, so that kind of started it for us. And, and anytime we would travel to a new city, uh, we would find the donut shop in that city. You know, um, and we would always return back to our lifelong hometown of Worcester and be like, well, why don't we have that here? Right. Um, and so that question we kept asking over the years. Um, and we were just like, you know, as as lifelong Worcester residents and, you know, we take a lot of pride in the city. We were like, well, why not Worcester? And then we were like, well, why not us? Like, why don't we just do it ourselves? Right. Um, so we were really inspired by the story of Lori and Paul Cattell, who own PV Donuts down in Providence. Uh, they, you know, had an idea for a donut shop and they started out of a, an incubator kitchen and they were doing like pop-ups and they quickly moved to a brick and mortar. But we were thinking, you know, let's follow that model. Let's, you know, do pop -ups. let's find a kitchen that we can use. Let's do pop-ups around the city. And just see where it goes, right? Because, you know, I didn't know if it wasn't happening here because somebody thought about it and said, no, it won't work in Worcester. Or maybe just nobody ever thought of it yet, right? So we just wanted to kind of take it slowly and see how it would go and prove the concept. Um, and so 
the Worcester Regional Food Hub was the only culinary incubator space in the area, mm -hmm. right? And so we joined there and we went through dozens of recipe testing at home. It was crazy. Our house smelled like fryer oil all we the time. We smelled like fryer oil. I will <laughs> never make it home again. It's just the pain. Um, but we, you know, we, we got our recipe down and we were at the food hub and, and we got that, that first break, which was three cross who yeah. nobody knew about us. You know, nobody cared to have us, but three cross, you know, let us come in and do our first pop-up. And, you know, I think we only made like 150 donuts, which seems like a lot to us. <laughs> at the time. Uh -huh. we, we sold them in like 30 minutes, <laughs> uh, but that started it. And then, um, you know, we, we were doing pop-ups month after month for, for two straight years. And, you know, as our, as we developed and we, you know, we grew, we were making more donuts. We had, you know, people reaching out to us, trying to get us to come to their space, to bring the lines. Um, you know, we thought, okay, this can be something more than just a pop-up. You know, this, this can be a legit business. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, we started looking for spaces ourselves in the city. Um, we even looked at the DCU center space where we're currently at right now, um, but it just yeah, seemed like uh, a little too much space, I think for at what, the time, yeah. you know, for just us. Um, so we passed on it. Um, but yeah, I mean, here we are now at uh, the space that we at, originally at that space looked at. That we looked at, yeah. you know, who knew <laughs> another incubator space in the city. Yes, that's right. It originally was. Um, and, I, you know, I didn't know that um, it was just going to be like a straight lease. I was, when we first looked at the space, I was like, oh, maybe they're still doing the incubator thing. Like, that'd oh, be, so they're that'd not be awesome. doing that anymore? No. Um, oh. that, that, yeah, so it's just a, you know, straight lease. Okay. Um, so, yeah, um, the DCU Center actually suggested to... Uh, our partners, Pam, Pam and Lee and Sun Vo, uh, that they reach out to us to see if we were interested in joining them. Um, and they did. And, you know, it was a great match because, uh, number one, they're Vietnamese. Susan's Vietnamese. So mm -hmm. it was like there was an immediate connection. Um, but, you know, Rain Drink Lab, their motto is recognize real. Like they're all about real like no fake things like you know quality ingredients that type of thing yeah they have a hashtag ftfs and i won't say it on the show because it's kind of if you know you know F the fake <laughs> yeah um you I, know, like our thing, I like it a lot we're from scratch you know we're using local quality ingredients like so the two brands like we're a perfect fit with one another mm -hmm. And so we are excited to join them. Um, and so, you know, we're partnering in the space, Rain Cafe, and uh, we're super excited about it. You know, we, on September 12th, we opened kind of a soft opening. Uh, yeah, like out the door. Out the door yeah. in a tent, like a very pop-up feel, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff um, you're used to. And I've seen, I've seen yeah. those lines. They're still going down the street. Granted, the COVID helps. Line was ridiculous it was all the way down foster street it and wrapping around the major taylor yeah, boulevard. boulevard uh just you know we were blown away by the response but you know people love donuts <laughs> you know um so yeah we this just this past weekend we actually opened the doors to, to let people inside uh it's still you know we're still working in the space um but it was 28 degrees at 9 a.m. when we opened and we didn't want to be standing outside and you know, with the door wide open to the shop we decided to let customers in and uh we got a lot of great feedback on the space i think um you know if, if anybody saw that was familiar with the space when it was figs and pigs and looks at all we've done to it now like it's it's night completely, and day. yeah completely different yeah so uh, we're super, super excited about it. It's been a lot of work, um, but That's an it's rewarding. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, as somebody else that has done pop-ups, I know how grueling of a schedule that is. And it's, it's so yeah. much more, especially for you guys, because you guys are proofing and you're doing stuff overnight where to do one event, you're sitting in eight to 10 hours, you know, and that's oh, yeah. on a light day. Yeah. And then you got yeah. another four hours on the backside, at least cleaning up and packing your stuff up and becoming human again. Yeah. I don't, I don't miss that. The packing up and cleaning or rushing to clean because like the next, um, I guess, what do you want to call it? Next vendor coming in at the food hub, you know, we didn't want to oh, hold them the up. Too. That was, that was stressful. So you guys, you guys are now fully uh, baking out of the DC center spot, right? Oh yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's so awesome. I wasn't sure if you guys were still at the food hub and then moving things over. I didn't know how much space. I don't know how much space it takes to make donuts. <laughs> so I was like, I, I also have no idea how much space is in there. I think I went into fig and figs and pigs maybe like four or five times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you know, our process is a 24 hour process. And so our dough rests in the fridge. So like we need dedicated fridge space. And, you know, when, when you're sharing a kitchen with tons of other, other members, right? Yeah. You can't just pop all the fridge space. Um, and, you know, kudos to the food hub, their membership has blown up recently. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, John's done a great job with, yeah. with that. Testament to Sean. Kitchen. Um, but we got crowded out a little bit. So this, it was the right time um, for us to move on. You know, the idea of the culinary incubator, come in, develop your, business and then move on right so so that's exactly what we used it for it's it like interesting mama bird, mama bird <laughs> making you guys fly <laughs> it's interesting hearing i actually have a note to ask like how you guys linked up with rain cafe so i'm glad you guys like touched on that it's interesting that the dcu center had them reach out to you guys because like i I knew who they were just based off of like friends in Boston who went to their spot. I never had anything from there. So with them and you like kind of teaming up, it, it almost like legitimized their brand for Worcester to be with you guys because you guys were already yeah. so established. Like everybody knows about Glazy Susan. So having you guys come in and team up with them, I was like, oh, that's kind of an interesting thing. Like I'm excited to try it. Uh, and I mean, obviously their coffee is amazing. I can't wait to like consistently get it. <laughs> it's always so hard on the weekends because there's a line and usually I have to go to work. So <laughs> mm-hmm. usually I have somebody yeah. like Jess will bring me donuts, but I usually have to have coffee way, way, way earlier in the day. But yeah, it's just cool. I didn't realize that, that it was kind of a, I didn't know who, who reached out to who to kind of set that up. So it was interesting that the DCU center was like matchmaker on that. Yeah, um, I think you're right. You know, Rain, Tam and his brand in you know of Rain, they're they're based in Dorchester. But Tam actually has Worcester connections. His his wife is from Worcester. She went to South Tam. Um, but you know, they knew that the name Rain wasn't very familiar out here in Worcester, so they did want to kind of establish that Worcester connection and. It was that's why it was a great fit to bring us in because we were already established here and we're Worcester people. Um, so you know, it, it brings that rain name to the forefront now in the city because all of our followers now see the name, you know. Yeah, um, and why you guys we, were there's involved. actually a third, it's a third partner in Rain Cafe and it's Sun and Bo. And Sun, uh, he's the chef at Chashu downtown. Mm-hmm. He owns for sure in Shrewsbury, the, the pho restaurant and Kaizen, um, in Starbridge. sushi and Sturbridge. Stun is a Worcester guy also. Um, but you know, Stun is so busy with Chashu right now that he's not at rain cafe yet. Yeah. When he gets the moment to breathe and gets to rain cafe, there's going to be, um, you know, breakfast, and there's going to be uh, rice, bowl, rice bowls salad. and salad bowls and Vietnamese oh. sandwiches. So this rain yes. cafe um, in time. So. Yeah. We'll just have to be patient. Yep. His food is phenomenal. I know. Yeah. I know. Everything I've had. I mean, that's where the, the, uh, the edamame 
comment at the beginning of the podcast oh. <laughs> or actually I think it was before we were even recording but yeah it's before we were recording but I brought it up on the show where Ricky's brought up the edamame at Chasu and he loves it's it. on everything I've had from there has been amazing but that edamame just like changed my whole life <laughs> I mean and you guys said it yourself like you were looking to branch out but was coffee like a coffee program ever in your wheelhouse like did you consider that yes I mean it only makes sense right coffee, um, donuts. Yeah, we exactly. absolutely envisioned having a coffee program once we opened our space. But the fact that we don't have to like learn a coffee program <laughs> it's our, that is like a win-win. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, it, it seems like you guys keep saying it, the alignment was just made way too much sense to turn it down. Yeah, absolutely. And we work well together, so it's just it's been it's been great. Are you guys only Funny. open on the weekends? I'm sorry, Susan. Sorry, Travis. I was going to say, funny story. I actually grew up um, like going to Dorchester every weekend, eating at Tam's restaurant prior to knowing Tam, because he owns Fahua, which is like connected to Rain Drink Lab. Okay. Um, so kind of has. It was it's meant weird. To be. Yeah, like the stars completely <laughs> aligned, and I was like, That's "Hey, did you wild. know that?" <laughs> like looking at your parents' restaurant, and he's like, "No, that's so weird." Yeah, so. Just a little funny tidbit. I there. love that kind of stuff, though, because it shows that it's a network and it's people. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. So, oh, yeah. But yeah, um, so that's super excited. Are you guys only open on the weekends these days still? Are you looking at doing donuts all week? So temporarily, yes, Saturday and Sunday. Um, we say 9 a.m. until 1, but it's really 9 a.m. until we sell out of donuts. Um <laughs> So we're looking to uh, expand more days, um, like Thursday Yeah, we'll be, we'll be Thursday through Sunday yeah. fairly soon. Uh, yes. We don't have exact day yet, but Thursday through Sunday. Then I believe when the hot food comes in, um, we may expand more to like six days a week. Yeah. Um, but we're a couple months out from that, so... Definitely more days. This is just kind of a, a first phase, you know, getting our feet wet, uh, getting used to operating in the space type of thing. And mm-hmm. then uh, because, you know, a lot of people are asking because some people work on the weekends and can't get there. Like, you know, when are you going to open on weekdays soon? Um, we're, we're taking That's it all in we phases. Can say. Yeah, yeah, just soon. <laughs> I mean, I understand. And I know you both have day jobs and you're trying to figure out your own personal lives as to when to make the leap. Is that the intention to make a full-time leap? Yes. So I am still Mm full-time with my day job. Susan uh, has stepped back um, at the pharmacy. um, And so she's really going to be almost full-time at Rain Cafe. Um, So like I'm just on the weekends kind of doing our weekend thing and still working my full-time job. But Susan's focusing on I'll be the full-timer at Rain Cafe. Yep. That's, That's so exciting. exciting. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you That's didn't awesome. exactly love the pharmacy, right? No. So. Yeah, the customers at our um, shop are a lot nicer. So <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> that sounds about right. You're prescribing yeah. people sugar. <laughs> That's right. Donuts. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, my my diet isn't super excited for you guys to expand to more days, but the entire rest of my life is very excited. <laughs> I mean, so as like, in terms of your donuts, I, I I just, I would love to be able to get one of the simple glazy Susan, the the simple glazed donuts. Like that is my favorite. I don't need a bunch of elaborate stuff, even though I did have the Vietnamese, I was like a Vietnamese coffee. 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 Yeah, that one was very mm-hmm. good. But the, just there's something so very good about your glazed donut that I wish I can just get. Because I can live off of one of those in the morning and not feel like a complete dirtbag. Yeah, well, it's funny you say that because it's still the number one seller. Like, I'm not surprised. We can come with, you know, any kind of special crazy flavor and the Glazy Susan is still the first one to sell out. So, so I, think- I actually... For the first time ever, had an actual classic Glazy Susan like two weeks ago, because mm-hmm. every single time I've tried to go to a pop up, that's always the one that's sold out. Or like normally everything's sold out, but that that one's never there. No matter what time I get there, it's always gone first. So 
who I think Jess, either Jess or Kevin Law brought me an actual glazy. Maybe it was like three weeks ago, but uh, it's literally the best donut in the world. That's a similar it's story. It's simple, but you can't go wrong with just, you know, what, a honey dip? Yeah. Donut. It's perfect. So it's good. so good. Yeah, Kevin <laughs> brought us some donuts at the wall when we were painting the mural. Kevin's yeah. good good about bringing people donuts is really the story. Here. Like, yeah. <laughs> Kevin's the man. Kevin's the man. The best type man. Yeah. You can ask. He, he really is. It's amazing. <laughs> so um, it's super exciting that you guys are expanding to Thursdays. Um, and it's awesome that you guys are fully open. So is there like formal, did we miss the formal festivities? Is there like a formal grand opening planned? So we're taking it weekend by weekend. Um, <laughs> Understandable <laughs> with everything. Yes, with everything. Uh, you know, it's taken a little long space done um w- the grand opening has been pushed back three times now yeah. um so we're, we're getting close we're really close uh we don't have an official date yet uh, we will announce it we'll blast it all over social when we have it we're planning to make it a huge event um you know ribbon cutting and hopefully maybe frying donuts all day long so that everybody Everyone that walks through the, the door can get a donut yeah um, so yeah, you know, we're planning for it to be big. Um, we're getting there, Understood. you know, we're getting there. It's a process. Um, you know, for people that came through the space this past weekend, they can see that a lot has been done, but there's still work happening. So, you know, we want the space, we want to be able to say, you know, this is us when we have our grand opening, like all the kinks have been worked out, all the renovation has taken place mm-hmm. um so once we get to that point where we're comfortable to say you know what we're putting forward is who we are then we'll have the grand opening mm-hmm. you don't want to show up to the party half dressed i get it exactly <laughs> that's right what i mean aside from the the typical worries like how insane was it opening a brand new business during covid <laughs> super insane um yeah i mean it, it's scary like especially the way the trends are going now like we would hate to have to you know go in lockdown again when we're yeah. trying to open up well know. i mean you see all our like friends their restaurants are closing down or only offering takeout like thankfully that's kind of like our model right now it's just takeout like you don't really sit inside our shop but yeah we're just taking it super slow because we don't want to you don't want to close because of COVID. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, masks required, like we're strictly enforcing that. Seriously, no masks, no donuts. Yeah. Like, don't take off. That's, yep. that's a serious, yeah. serious motto right there. I'm into it. Yeah, everybody <laughs> should endorse that. Yeah. So, you know, it's concerning. Uh, so we're just, we're taking it day by day and taking it slowly. And, you know, if only people would would listen and wear their masks and stay away from each other and we could get over this. Yeah. Right. Okay. But yeah. No. Crazy. Um, yep. Before we go too far, I need to know what's the fastest sellout you've ever had doing, a, was it a pop-up or was it, has it been since you guys have been open or at least like at the DC center spot? So it had to be a pop-up because... Well, if you're taking account into numbers, are you taking account into like donut time, numbers? Time, time. Time? time. Well, my second question is, how many donuts was that sell out? <laughs> well, well asked this one for a pop-up. Was it new tradition? We've done a couple 45-minute sell-outs. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember. There was Bedlam. Bedlam was oh, pretty... That was, oh, no, no. Ed Hyder's. Oh, was Ed, Ed Hyder's was like a 30 minute sellout. We felt so <laughs> bad because there was still a big line when we sold out. But, but was, who would have thought that people would come out on, on a, a Thursday, Thursday night, night to Ed Hyder's, you know? So okay. that was the fastest 30 minutes. Um, that was like was it 300? 300. Yeah. Like we were doing like 300 back then. Oh. Whereas like on our opening day on September, September 12th, we did 600. So like, 
we at least doubled our capacity to make donuts going from the food hub to mm-hmm. the uh, rain cafe. Um, how long did it take us to sell 600? Like three hours? Yeah, I think it took three hours. 12 o'clock. We were... yeah. But that line was crazy back then. Right. So it's wild. Strong. Yeah. Uh, not but yeah, you know, an hour was typically like the sellout time for the pop ups. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, we always hated to leave customers without donuts, but you know, it was nice to be able to go sell for an hour and go home and go to sleep. You know, <laughs> yeah, because you been up for like however many hours prior to that making donuts. Exactly. Right. Oh, there's nothing worse that- than standing there with food, being like, "Please, anybody, come buy my food so I can go home." <laughs> I know. I know. Like we did brew woo last year and that was a gruel because it was two sessions, it was two sessions yeah. and you know it, you have to stay for the whole thing you know we, we made enough donuts to not sell out but like being up making donuts and then like being on your feet for two sessions of brew all oh. day long great i was tired yeah yeah but you know <laughs> those things a lot of people came through and we got our name out there so it was worth it you know Mm -hmm. and is it still just the two of you making all these donuts so we've since hired two people right on the donut side we have four total bakers right now um myself we had we had uh actually our third baker was with us in the kitchen helping on our very first pop-up yes back at the old food hub at the um worcester uh Food pantry. Yeah, food bank. Uh, so so that's food like, bank, right? I would always screw yeah. that up. Yeah. Uh, that was crazy how that came full circle. And she's, you know, she went part-time with her full-time job to work with us more. So that's cool. And then um, we actually just hired a Holy Cross student who, uh, I'm, I'm sure there's not many opportunities for jobs on campus because campus is closed. Right. Uh, so yeah, she's, she's up early with us making donuts and it's great. That's fantastic. So there's so four. Awesome. But like we, you know, we have plans to grow. So we are trying to grow our team, but we need the right, the right people. And the right fit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and so. to make that many donuts, you just can't do it with two people only. That makes sense that you guys are getting back up. Yeah, mm-hmm. we need it. But, you know, the good thing is we don't have to <laughs> make the donuts clean up, pack Pack everything up, drive to the pop-up spot, set up. Like we make the donuts, they're on the rack. We turn around and we sell them. Right. Right. So that gives us an extra like hour and a half to two hours at least (laughs) that we can use, you know, to finish donuts instead of schlepping them across town, you know, clean afterwards. We don't have to rush to clean anymore for the next person because it's our shop now. Yeah. Yeah. So that's only you. Hmm. It's the cross contamination in the fridge that I gotta imagine. Like the somebody puts some gnarly barbecue in there overnight, and your nice and subtle <laughs> lime whatever yeah. now just tastes like raw chicken, chicken dripping juice. Oh, I oh. like. We yeah. never had a problem, but those are the those are the things that you have to deal with. Without naming shared. names, I've heard some some serious issues of cross-contamination of flavors. And this person is well, very particular about the way she does her stuff. But uh, and she would <laughs> just read me the riot act about all these people that would leave flavors in the fridge and mess with stuff. Yeah. Well, no, I remember. Yeah. There, were like, there were like pops and pans and spoons contaminated with like spices and you couldn't like fully get it out so like, do you want like a spicy curried donut? <laughs> Some people <laughs> honestly, I'd, I'd probably try it. <laughs> Didn't Dunkin' Donuts right now? Didn't Dunkin' Donuts just release like a spicy donut something? I, did. Yeah, I saw it yeah. on somewhere. Twitter, oh, Dunkin'! Yeah. I tried it. The ghost pepper donut, right? Was, the spice was just just enough there to let you know. Okay. Wasn't. Yeah, but your tongue is broken, like. Oh, yeah. Spicy food to you isn't spicy food to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, you're a super taster. 
Susan, <laughs> I feel the same way. My wife or my significant other can eat just like flaming whatever, and she feels fine. Meanwhile, my tongue feels sad for her. Yeah. Right. Fun fact, your wife and I went to high school together. Yeah. So I, really, I asked her about this last night. I said, um, you know, it's probably going to come up that you and Joe went to school together. Can we talk about that? She's like, yeah, of course. It's not like we were like really close friends. We had maybe a couple of classes together, we, but he was always a really nice guy. And I'm like, I could see that. I could totally see that. So yeah, that's, you know, that's the backstory I got. We weren't in the same friend, but like I considered myself a friend to everybody. Like I, you know, I, I didn't have any enemies or anything. You know, no click. No, yeah, I wasn't clicky. Hey, yeah. Uh, Life's too short, right? <laughs> Life's too short for clicks. <laughs> So we've kind of covered, you know, how we've gotten to this point, what's here, and you guys have some loose ideas as to what's next. Anything else that you want to share about what's next or like any lofty ambitions? Multiple Glazy well, Susan locations? We won't, we won't go too far into detail, but we do have uh, tentative plans for, for location band. number two. Yeah. And Excited. it's a very high profile spot. Yeah. Uh, we're super excited about it. Like, I want to spill the beans so bad, but, but we can't. Smart. We have to wait. <laughs> Smart. Just have to. There, there are big things. It. So, ha <laughs> 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 There it is. There he is, <laughs> Larry Butt. He was being yeah, good, like, and he was he was sitting over there, and I was like, all right, maybe he won't. Oh no, he knows. <laughs> Larry. <Hey. Tuck. laughs> okay, you can't sit there. <laughs> um i'm gonna have to blur that man the, right, so, <laughs> yeah, i know right like, the uh, blur line right there. so it's too too early but it's a high profile that's super exciting guys super exciting for you yeah i'm glad to hear that everything's going well i mean again yeah seeing where yeah. you've started we're always you know blown away by the support from the community like you know for me, like, I never expect it. Like, I, I never expect there to be a line every time we open up the shop on the Joe weekend. Joe is, but, like, like, the worst case scenario. He's like, no one's going to show up and eat our donuts. I'm like, just just relax. But they're always <laughs> there. And, like, we love them for it. And, like, we're, we're super appreciative of, of the support. And I'm also, I also want to say, Travis, uh, I want to thank you because before we started popping up, you took the time to meet with me to kind of show me the ropes on how you do your pop-up. You know, uh, how, you know, give me the contacts for different places. You were responsible really for our Acoustic Java pop-up, which is our second pop-up that we ever did. So I want to thank you for that. No worries, man. Um, share and share alike. It's all about community. That's awesome. <laughs> yep. Before we even, 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 even ever knew you, Sorry, um, you shared stuff on Instagram uh, that was for our acoustic Java pop up. So thank you for that. Also, of course, you guys help <laughs> get started. I mean, but that's the whole point, right? It's like we are building this community of all these really cool people that have so much interesting stuff to bring to the table, you know, and we need people making good food. We need people shouting it out and we just need, you know, a lot of other people supporting it. And I think that's what yeah. we have here in our city. And like, yeah, yeah, we're in the middle of this pandemic, so we can't all go play like we used to, but we can still show our support and show our love and, you know, shout out the people that are doing the work. That's what, that's, yep. that's my favorite thing about this city. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, okay. I don't want to know how you do it. Cause like, I don't want to spill any beans, but also I'll never be able to do it myself. I just need to let you know that the Boston cream donut that I had this weekend, how you were able to like do it and still have a donut hole in the middle and the same, like was the bagel. No, the bagel donut doesn't have a hole, right? Or the bagel. Know. Okay. Either way, those are the two greatest things I've ever had in my life. Like <laughs> we, we had like a huge inventory week basically at Worcester Wares and so Jess brought two boxes of donuts on Saturday. And as soon as she opened it, I was like, look, I don't care what happens the rest of the day or who wants what. I just need a Boston cream. And I promise you, I'll, I'll do whatever. I'll never eat a donut for the rest of my life. I just, I need to know. 
I know it's going to be good. And then when I picked it up and it was like fully round with a hole, I was like, there's no way. And then I bit into it and I was messy and it was beautiful, but wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yep. actually top secret information. Trade secrets. But there's one thing I want people to take away from this podcast. It's try the filled ring. Yeah. We'll always have a filled ring on our menu. It'll change month to month, but that's our signature. Yeah. So okay. I'm glad you brought it up. How, so I, for, I couldn't not. I've thought about it every single hour, basically, since Saturday. <laughs> like, for like, I don't know, what day is it? Monday? So it's been like 48 straight hours of just like, damn, I wish I like... I wish I brought another one with me. I don't even know who ate the other. I know Mike P had one because he had, so he had a Boston cream. I had a Boston cream and then we split one of the bagel ones because there was other mm-hmm. people there. And we're like, we don't want to be the only ones eating them. Uh, and as soon as we got down, we both were like, man, we really messed up. Like we should have just took the other one. Totally, totally full. <laughs> They're so good. Thank you. Yeah. But like that's, we're trying to bring new things like that to Worcester. And, mm-hmm. You know, we have more new things up our sleeve that, We'll roll out in time, but yeah. The filled, uh, ring. The filled ring is going to like be the like perfect, a... the perfect ratio of dough to filling in every bite. It's not like you take a bite yes. and there's no filling. You get a huge amount of filling. It's like with the regular filled donut. It's the perfect amount. Mm-hmm. You don't get the it, it really is. is. Yeah. For September, we have the guava cheesecake, also a filled ring. <sighs> Last that was... it was pumpkin cheesecake and the ring was filled pumpkin cheesecake. Um, and this month is the Boston cream and next month is to be announced. <laughs> I'm here for it. Wait, so is this November yeah. or October? So this November, is the November is, okay. November yeah. is the Boston cream. <laughs> I, I mixed yep. that up. Well, that's very, very exciting. See, you guys mentioned that the guy coming is bringing breakfast sandwiches and I can see the donut sandwich. Nobody's really messing with the donut sandwich around here either. Coming. I had yes. a feeling. Yes. I had a feeling. Yes. I mean, there's just something so very good about the sea- sweet and savory. Like, yeah, you look like a fat American eating it, but if you do it right with like high end flavors, why not treat yourself? Yeah, exactly. And speaking of donut sandwiches. <laughs> all right. So let me turn on the light because it's getting done. Oh, no, how about this? <laughs> so speaking of donut sandwiches, uh, John DeMoga, mm-hmm. and we have been tossing the idea around of doing like a spicy chicken, fried chicken donut sandwich. I am oh. there for it. I am there yes. for it. You name the so, day, I will I will line yeah. up. I'll bring a tent. I'll just hang out <laughs> on the sidewalk. I'm going to need like four. Two I can eat to my face, and then two I can warm up in an oven somewhere maybe. But mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, that's exciting, guys. Got like the chicken and waffle vibe going yeah. for it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A maple that's, ring? What? That's all I've ever <laughs> wanted in my entire life. It's just Glazy Susan and Mama Roo to have an edible child that I can An eat. edible child! <laughs> <laughs> it's horrendous yeah. that we're recording this. So listeners know we are recording this around dinner time, and now I'm yeah. starving. <laughs> yeah. I'm starving, We're too. all starving now. <laughs> Me, too. <laughs> And I'm looking at that chicken you have between your heads, and I'm thinking, that looks pretty good. <laughs> we have um, another one in the kitchen. Do you? That's is it awesome. another Magritte? Is it another like Man in Hat style? Yeah, same exact thing. Mm-hmm. Except it's much bigger. Just, Just a big, massive overlooking our dining room table. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's awesome. My home decorating. Sure. For now. I don't. I don't think Naomi will let me hang up. Like the the art that the art that I have is all like banned. Put it in a like nice frame and, and stuff. I have two things I'm gonna frame, but I'm probably gonna keep them in my office because they. I don't know if she really needs like a giant framed version of Dave Grohl driving a moped. I think we do. I'm Turns failing. Out we don't. I'm failing to see why you wouldn't. <laughs> I, I'm looking at a blank wall right here, but I don't know if it'll work well in the, the dining Plenty of room. landscape for Dave to go put putting. There you go. <laughs> um, well, I mean, so like we've talked about your restaurant. What do you, what kind of stuff do you guys get excited for in the city? Like who are you going and experiencing and 
I mean, you brought up the Moga. Everybody loves Mama Brew. You guys excited Love for Mama. anybody else? Um, we so <clears throat> being downtown now, we have been going to Maker to Main. Yeah. Re- very regularly. Love, Love that place. Yeah, Lynn's spot and, is awesome. You know, <clears throat> we we get stuff from her for the business, but we also are like always getting like dinner stuff. Yeah. The honey nut squash you guys have that to she try has it. right now is like yeah. Have you heard of honey nut squash? It's like no. a little it, it looks like a butternut, but it's like a tiny mini version and it's like super sweet. Like oh. it's just like a per serving for one person too it's like that's what we've been eating for dinner i'm surprised we haven't turned orange yet. yeah well i <laughs> they she ran a special where like if you pre-order your turkeys you get what is it 50 half off, off squash so squash. we went and ordered our turkeys for thanksgiving and walked out with a box full of honey nuts <laughs> yeah. yeah uh so so maker domain is great but Dead Horse also, we've been yeah, like, we've they've been, been crushing it lately. So that you know, sandwich we, program is just, yeah. We haven't had that breakfast sandwich yet, Ricky. But oh, it looked, dude, it, it's so. I was like, I mean, it's probably better that I took a weekend off from it. But the first two weekends <laughs> they had it, I had like we had it the first weekend, and uh, ooh, cats are fighting. Um, <laughs> and. <laughs> Naomi was like, yeah, okay, like, you know, I'll get something. Because at first it was just going to be me. I was like, look, I saw this picture. I can't I can't go the rest of the day without having a sandwich. So we both got one. I got mine with bacon. She's a vegetarian, so she got no bacon. And every single day until the next Sunday, we both were like, so we're getting that sandwich, right? Like, we have to get that again. <laughs> so good. So, yeah, they've been – their their menus have just been awesome – uh, we've, we've been doing our big prep for the weekend on Thursday nights, and we've been just going over there after prep and getting dinner. Nice. So it's been great. Chashu, I mean, you know, it, it's kind of in, all in the family with Chashu, but, you know, they're they're crushing it too. So those three spots have been our sort of mm-hmm. obsession recently. Yeah. Nice. Sure. That's been the only place I've actually eaten inside of since March. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. That so the interior good. is, you don't feel like you're in Worcester. You feel like you're somewhere else. And have you That's been to the, the bathroom? Yeah, yeah. they're amazing. <laughs> yeah. I have. They're so Tell cool. T- what, what makes them so amazing? Oh, it's just, it's all, it's like black and the sinks. It's like so high tech and I don't know, it's just super fancy. You don't feel like you're in Worcester. They have a private room back that you probably haven't seen yet because they haven't opened it yet, but it's like for private. And it's called the Eden Room because I don't know if you know this, but that space, that restaurant used to be the Eden Gardens restaurant, which was like this big, well-known mm-hmm. Worcester restaurant. It was like a Worcester um, like iconic hall. establishment yeah. back in the day. Like my my grandparents had their wedding reception there. Like it was a hangout for like Telegram and Gazette reporters and athletes. Oh, um, so That's it was so a really sick. high. And so they are like tipping the cap to the Eden Gardens restaurant by calling that the Eden Room, and it's super, it's super cool inside. So, mm-hmm. oh, you know, that's awesome. we said, Pam, the owner, one of the owners, and our partner said, uh, we should have our anniversary dinner there next year. It's open. It's it's a really cool spot. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm I, I mean, obviously you guys know, but that restaurant. Dead Horse, like Armsby, and then Dead Horse, and now those guys are just like these absolute game changer restaurants that are just changing the entire landscape of Worcester. It's unbelievable. I mean, we literally the only place we've had food inside has been there. We've been twice because, like, a they're amazing with how they're handling everything, but also the food is just so so good. Mm-hmm. It's on and like we sat down. We're like, where are we right now? Like, this doesn't feel like Worcester at all. Like, I'm expecting to walk out and be like, Central Park or like somewhere like not the Commons. Like, it makes no sense, but it's just unbelievably good. Yeah, mm-hmm. so excited okay. they have another room. Excited to try that out. <laughs> I'm excited to try out the bathroom. 
Currently the bathrooms my favorite, are amazing. <laughs> my favorite bathroom in the city is at Redemption Rock, just because Danny and oh, the crew there is so yeah. thoughtful. Yeah, super nice bathrooms there too. But the sink is weird. I always feel like I'm going to just splash water everywhere in that tiny little sink. Oh, uh, yeah. Where am I? I'm a giant. Anyway. I If we <laughs> ever get our bathrooms redone in our house, I think I'm just going to like take pictures of the Shashi one and just be like, I want this. Can you do this? <laughs> I don't care. I just want everything to be black and sleek and awesome. Like, yeah. I couldn't get a black room in my house. I've tried so many times. Sarah tells me no. <laughs> what color do you want to paint this? Not black. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, you guys have been fantastic. Uh, congratulations on all the success. Super excited for you guys. Um, Obviously, we can't wait till we get donuts every day. But until then, how do people follow you? How do people find you on the internet if they don't already know? At Glazy Susan on Instagram and Twitter, facebook.com slash Glazy Susan. Uh, at Glazy Susan on TikTok. Yeah. You guys are TikToking too? Uh, yep. Yeah. And Glazy Susan. That's so awesome. You guys have a TikTok. I'm so excited. <laughs> the fact hey, that you guys you gotta, have like an active Twitter account is a, is like my I, it, Twitter's my favorite platform. So like, there's only like four places though I feel in Worcester that have active TikTok, uh, uh, Twitter accounts. Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, so it gets me like so pumped whenever I see you guys post. I'm like, there it is. Twitter's the move. Here for it. I didn't even know you guys had a TikTok. It's funny because Twitter, we always kind of forget, and then I'm like. After the fact, I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta post the Twitter. So I'm doing the Twitter, and it's. I like to make make the caption a little bit different than what we put on Instagram, yeah. so that we're not just copying and pasting over there. But I try to stay active on Twitter. Uh, I'm here for it. Who are you guys like doing the dances on TikTok? Like, what's the? I mean, I'm obviously going to follow as soon as we get off of this. Donut but. dances. Susan is. She loves TikTok on her personal. Account. I'm obsessed. We yes. have, but we're not super active on it yet. But we will. We will. Still figuring we out the strategy. Donuts, like us tearing into the donut on the glazy. I don't know. Just like donut videos of us just slow mo tearing and seeing the filling inside with like music oh. in the background. So hell yeah, that sounds good to me. <laughs> I love TikTok and I remember Naomi gave me so much crap about it at first until the pandemic hit and like she finally like looked at it and then she became obsessed and we'll just like watch it until the video comes up when the guy's like, you've been watching TikTok for 45 minutes or whatever the time is. You get that too? I've never yeah. had it. Yeah. It's like, we know that you've been scrolling a lot or something like that and I just scroll past them. I don't want to Yeah, like, nope. <laughs> don't tell me my business constant scroller but she'll always send me like the the hand curated uh, you know you get the highlight the, reel me and i get to watch all the good ones i don't have to scroll through everything yeah so it's great <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> well susan joe you guys have been delightful to have on um can't wait to see you down at the shop and uh hope to see you soon thanks again for coming on thank you thank guys thank you God, thank you guys so much. Everybody go follow them on TikTok. Duh. Cool. So that was super fun. Uh, and I would say wildly long overdue that we had those guys on. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, again, we keep talking about the list that we first made. They've been on the list since the beginning. It just, yeah. it always felt like, like we were waiting for that to make a lot of sense. Plus we get distracted easily. Yeah. I mean, I mean, also they both have full-time jobs and then we're running, you know, kind of like full steam on the weekends doing the whole like pop-up circuit. I don't know what to call it. Pop up. That's tour. what it is. It's a, it's a circuit, man. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it kind of just worked out where now is the, the right time to have them on, but that was awesome. I mean, every, every awesome city, has a donut spot and we didn't have one until now i mean like you have some of your more traditional style donut new england style donut shops which are fine you know what i mean like yeah don't get donut. me wrong 
I good. fuck really hard with Donut Cafe one and two. Like their donuts are amazing. Don't get me wrong. I'm here for them every day of the week, but it's not lazy Susan. Yeah, I mean, and I feel the same way. It's just like there's just something about having i think they called it a specialty donut or like a truly catered donut that it's just made with a little bit more love yeah no it's it's the move and it's still dinner time and we're recording this and i'm still starving so i'm kind I know, of know naomi started making something i don't know what it is that smells really good i don't know if she's making tacos, tacos? oh breaking you. news your boys having tacos on a monday mexican monday <laughs> That's done. I, you know, what's funny. I, for breakfast, wow, this is like a Mexican Monday. I had, I made myself breakfast quesadillas this morning because I was going to make breakfast tacos. And then I was like, oh, you know, it'd be really funny if I did quesadillas, but I ran, no, it wasn't weird. It was dope. They, <laughs> they always like, that's weird. No, it wasn't. The only thing weird about it though, is like the top, the bottom tortilla was like a small one. And we only had one left. And then the top tortilla was the next bag under it, which was a little bit bigger. So, yeah, I had to. I you ate half of the other small one. You like ate half of it. I didn't think about that until it was too late. Listeners Sorry. enjoy this spat. No, no, this is this is this is what life with Ricky really is like. This is, yeah, life with Ricky is all about the tortillas. <laughs> but yeah, so I like I made myself these really dope. Uh, breakfast quesadillas which i think maybe i'm gonna start a pop-up thing that's just breakfast quesadillas i'm just gonna swap shit out here and there it's gonna be dope sorry for partying here we go but yeah now we're having tacos for dinner this is amazing what a day uh so back lucky. to the interview the interview was dope that whole pop-up yeah. idea i i feel like we're underselling how much hard work and like i brought it up on the show before that we used to do these popover events um i think we were still doing popovers when we started this thing and yeah you were just <laughs> It is grueling, man. It is it is a lifestyle that takes a certain strength of person. And I give them a lot of credit for being able to make that leap, being able to go from the tour, the the route that you just talked about. And now they have one spot, one spot they got to worry about. Yeah. And it's such a cool, it's cool. Like I know that Worcester has been kind of on the rise for a while but there's really even nothing downtown uh, that kind of gives you like, like you can, I mean, not that you should do this at the moment due to like COVID, but it's almost becoming like an area where you can spend a full day, right? Like you can do brunch at dead horse or arms and then you can do, or, or get donuts in the morning and then you can go do lunch at a spot there's Shasu now, and now you've got, you know, add that to Dead Horse and Arms, you're like, we're talking, and you've got Maker to Main down there. And, Stop and by Owl Shop, grab yourself a cigar, and walk around the city. Like, there's tons exactly. of Exactly. Like, yeah, there's just, like, all this cool stuff kind of kind of popping up. I mean, it's wild because it's, it's literally the center of the city, but there was never anything there. Like, everything was in that Shrewsbury Street, Water Street, Highland Street, like you know, everything was kind of branching off of downtown, but there was really nothing to kind of like pull people in um, for like a full day of activities. And now, you're, now you kind of have that, and it's awesome. It's, it's so smart teaming up with the guys from Rain too. Like their coffee's unbelievably good. I haven't had the chance yet, but I hope to very soon. Dude, the Royal is the move. Oh. What makes it a Royale with cheese? It's <laughs> so it's Vietnamese coffee or Vietnamese, yeah, Vietnamese. <laughs> coffee with uh sea salt and sweet cream see yeah right yeah so it's like unbelievably tasty but it's like got that little bit of saltiness got that little bit of sweetness it's not overly sweet i don't like sweet drinks so but it's something i could crush like six gallons of a day a heart attack worth it really um i'm a big fan of a thai iced coffee which is basically just coffee with sweetened condensed milk yeah. So that the Royal sounds my jam bone. Yeah, dude, it's the move. It's so freaking good. I am so hungry. All right. Let's Peace get to Stokes and Pokes so we can get out of here. Take it away, <laughs> someone. When you hit them with those stokes, ow! <laughs> Gotta slap them with those pokes. Oh, yeah. Stokes and Pokes. All right. 
oh my god i'm gonna poke my allergies because for whatever reason they've been going nuts <laughs> today but not really um i'm gonna poke a couple things one i think i think i whined about this on another show that daylight saving time is annoying um it's stupid annoying that yeah we gain an hour but why do we have to deal with this my dogs don't wear a watch but they always know when it's 5 30 except now it's they don't understand that we've messed up the clock so they're all getting screwed up it's just it's annoying uh what i'm really more poking is everything about what's going to happen tomorrow and or when this drop episode drops it'll be today everything leading mm. up to today on the world stage our country is acting a fool and it's it sucks. It sucks seeing the downfall or like the back end. You know what I mean? Like America's now that eighties band that partied too hard and we're on the back end. And like, we can only play tiny club venues now because we did all that weird shit. And nobody trusts us. Sure. Um, yeah. That analogy just came to me, but it's just with everything That's good. about okay. this election, I hope we can return to some resemblance of civility, some resemblance of just not having to fucking Hawkeye the news and be embarrassed about what our leader said today. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of wild that this is the last podcast we're doing before we know what happens. And like, we, we talked about it with the lazy Susan guys and like, like Joe, Susan, are you guys cool with coming on for the election episode? Because it's going to be a sweet, sweet distraction for everything else. Get it? Because donuts are sweet. Oh, Unintended. Oh, 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 oh. So, um, like Ricky mentioned, I'm stoked that it snowed the other day. And not necessarily that it snowed, because it kind of sucked. But in the yeah. middle of the day, I get a knock on the door. And, and I'm like, who the hell is this? And I open up the door, and it's two kids from the neighborhood. And they have shovels in their hand. They're probably like 14, you know, maybe a little older, 15, probably too young to get real jobs, but clearly old enough to move a shovel and uh, knock on the door and ask me if I need my stuff, my stairs and my sidewalk shoveled. And normally I would be like, nah, man, I got this. Like, I appreciate the offer, but we're sitting a little pretty at the moment. We have some, a little bit of disposable income. These are two kids that are clearly from the neighborhood because they walked here. Yeah. And I love young entrepreneurs. I freaking love the fact that these kids are out busting their ass when they could have the day off. So I'm like, hell yeah. They were like, all right, you know, we'll do your sidewalk. We'll clean off your car. I'm like, you guys can leave the car alone, but let's do the sidewalk and the stairs. And you know, how much? And he's like, oh, and like, I think we were the first, I think I was the first person to actually like agree to him. Uh, yeah. He was yeah. like 20 bucks. And I'm like, all right, man, but that seems like a lot of work for 20 bucks. That's only $10 for each of you. How about we do 30 and they're like 15 each. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, well, do you guys have, do you guys have, you know, Venmo or something? Oh, we got cash app. So I end up cash apping one guy's dad and the other guy's brother. And they did a bang up job. That's so awesome. big, big shout out to Andy and to Sean. Thanks guys for shoveling the front walk. Uh, I didn't tell them anything about me other than the fact that I thought they were ref. And I oh, love yeah. that young entrepreneurs still exist. And yeah, That's COVID so and all this stuff. But I hope they were able to help out some older people and some people that didn't couldn't do it themselves. Yeah. That's dope, man. I hope we have I actually have to go get a piece for our snowblower. But I'm hoping that some little kid walks up the next time it snows and is like, Can I show your driveway? And I'll be like, Hell yeah, dude. Like so I can remember a time when I used to do this back when I was a kid. And then there was one time my mom set it up for me with one of the neighbors, but it like, nice. it wouldn't stop snowing. Yeah, so oh yeah. I, would, I just kept telling her, I'm going to wait for it to stop snowing. And then I just never did it. And that was the last <laughs> time I got asked. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll do it. Yeah. Well, it's the same reason. Like I, I, my dad didn't ask me to cut the lawn as a kid because I would not literally spell my name, but figuratively spell my <laughs> name. So, like, don't ask Travis to mow the lawn. He mows it like an asshole. There you go. Oh, yeah. What do you got for the people? Solid. All right. So, my Stokes and Pokes, um, I would say we can start with my poke. Um, <clears throat> all right. A couple hours ago, Chucky Bake Sale popped on, did a little, uh, did a little press conference. Where he announced Chucky like a bunch of new sale. Chucky Bake Sale. 
he pops on, did a little press conference announcing a bunch of new, like, I don't even want to know. I don't even know what to call them anymore. Like, like regulations. Right. Um, he did a mask mandate and like all the stuff that they've been doing, which people either they're doing it or they're not doing it. But he also announced a new curfew for restaurants and movie theaters and all these types of places where you have to be closed by nine 30 at night. So there's, cause there's a curfew between 10 PM and 5 AM, like starting on November 6th. I think, I think it's Friday. Something like that. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Which is, which is fine. I get it, but you're not like nobody's most restaurants are closed by nine o'clock during these, like during these hours and stuff like that for, because of COVID, because it's not busy. So having people like mandatory be home during times they're already home, isn't really solving the problem. <laughs> he knocked down indoor events to 10 people. Outdoor events is like, I think 25 or something again. Um, it's just kind of frustrating because you're not, it's kind of like just having a press conference saying you're doing something just to say you did it. Yeah. I still fully envision us having to like get as close back to phase one as possible. Um, probably in the next like three weeks and it's going to be, yeah, exactly. It's going to be really interesting to watch how that all plays out because of the holiday season and the effect that's going to have on small businesses during holiday season and all the money that all these restaurants already put in to building the partitions and getting up to, I, I guess you can call it like, like the new code, <laughs> um, to be able to be open right now and to have that kind of taken away over the next couple of weeks is going to be kind of hard to watch. Uh, but something has to happen. Like you have to do something because there's not enough people paying it. Like there's not enough people following the rules. So you either shut everything down and make them stay home again as much of a mandatory thing as you possibly can. It's happening in Europe. It's going to happen here. <laughs> like, why are we like trickling? We're trickling back there at like a very inopportune time. Well, and again, so. because we've done, we've made masks a political issue. You look at a country exactly. like Japan where I want to say something like 80% of their population wears masks as already part of their culture. And yeah. they are not dealing with the, the level of disease that we are. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely wild. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, it's just kind I, of crazy. I'm with you, man. And it sucks. We still have you know, small business friends that are still struggling. They're basically <laughs> treading water at this point. Just For sure. praying to God that this whole thing doesn't go belly up again. That's yeah, I mean, the, the scariest part, I mean, there's a million scary parts to it, but knowing that like we're probably going to have to go back into quarantine – and knowing no matter what happens tomorrow or Wednesday or whenever we find out what the actual final result is, if Biden wins, he can't start making decisions until the fucking end of January. And if Trump wins, and we and if that's the case, we know that like the administration who have already done like as little as they possibly can do, they're sure as hell not gonna go back and do what they did in the spring. They don't care anymore, they're on their way out. And if they do win what's their like do they have i mean we all know they don't have a plan but like how bad is that going to be because if you don't help the people who are going to have to go on unemployment they in return can't help the small businesses during the holiday season because nobody's making enough money so it becomes this like what do you do i mean the common sense thing is you do exactly what you did back in the spring you just shut everything down start with a three-week period, give everybody that extra money in their unemployment check so they can continue to support small businesses via online, via curbside pickup, via takeout. And hopefully people can make it through the holiday season. Or we play this weird game, nobody helps anybody, and even more businesses go out of business. And then a small group of people make a whole fuckload of money. Exactly. Which That's is the American pretty American way. It's the American way. Do you so, got a poke for or do you got a stoke for us? Do you got something to be happy about? I do, I do. Um I'm so, so my excited. stoke, 
My Stoke is my Madonna shirt. Well, <laughs> yeah, look at that beautiful thing. <laughs> Shout out Doss Bootleg for making the sickest merch in the game. I got a Madonna shirt. Shout out 1980s Madonna. And I got a David Lee Roth shirt. So I'm pretty excited. Um, but my actual Stoke is Worcester has dropped the first batch of our holiday stuff on Saturday. A lot of work, a lot of planning, literally months of <laughs> strategic planning went into that. Um, and it was wildly successful. We broke our single day sales record, which was very impressive for a company or a, a yeah, a, a small business that was pri- primarily brick and mortar with one store upgraded to two stores, but only for like two months before COVID shut that operation down, uh, to, to beat your sales record with being an online only business after having to like kind of change overnight was super impressive to watch. Um, yeah, so it was dope. Thank you so much everybody who bought all the new Worcester gear. I know we dropped like 5,000 Travis designs. It feels like <laughs> I, it's a lot of them are the same ones over and over again. They definitely moved though. I was looking at some of the orders yesterday and I was like, oh. how's, how's the phonetic one doing? Are people digging the phonetic one? They are. I, so for the most part, I just look at like whatever the little screen is on our order thing. So I see a lot of the rocker design, but they're in orders with multiple things. I'll sure. actually, I can let you know tomorrow. Cause after a new tradition, I have to go there and start to package a lot of orders. Um, but yeah, so Shout yeah, out I want to get my hands on one of those those phonetic ones because we got to wear it here on the show. I, I need exactly, to show it off to the exactly, people. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I'm super stoked on that. It was kind of cool. I've never been a part of with Worcester Wears. I've never been a part of a uh, a holiday rollout and to have to do it during a time that none of us were really ready for. Well, not that we weren't ready for it, but to kind of do it in a way we've never done it was very exciting for me. Um, super exciting actually to watch it all come to life and then have it be extremely successful was, was really, really, really fun. So we've literally been talking about this since July. So to have it finally happen was cool. And then we have another drop coming in a couple of weeks. So we're doing it all over again. So I'll be back at Starbucks at, you know, six forty in the morning. <laughs> Seeing your chummy friend ordering my the wrong dude. coffee. My new dude. No, that might be my new move, man. Oh, well, until oh, my then, move. Not my regular move, <laughs> until then, you'll just have to keep coming back week after week and uh, checking in with us because exactly. you have done it, my friend. You have killed another hour plus listening to us ramble, and for that, we are forever grateful. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, you could find me, Travis, at seltzertime.com. Well, you can find both of us at seltzertime.com, but you could find me on the internet at Hunchback Travis. Uh, you guys can find me at Dick Chuck 77 or Seltzer Time Official. Uh, I really hope that by the time you listen to this episode, you voted because it'll probably be too late by the time you hear this, I'm guessing. Um, but yeah, so yeah. good fucking luck, everybody. Good luck. Know that we care about you. Know that there are good people in the world and whatever happens in the next couple of days, hopefully we'll get through it together. And remember, even if pieces of shit win, you don't have to be a piece of shit in return. Agreed. (laughs) Good luck, everyone. Bye, guys. 